All right, well, the CCXP 2022 The Last of Us HBO panel just official officially finished like an hour or so ago. And this is just the replay of it because the channel is still actually playing things live. So it was cool to be able to see it live, though the time was wrong. At least I thought, because I, I thought I was going to play at 1 o'clock my time, and I almost missed it. I just happened to be setting the YouTube up. I was basically setting it up, ready to go to capture it as it was happening. And at 12.30 my time, it was already starting, so I was off by half an hour. I don't know if that was me messing up or they were early, but it was it was on for kind of a short panel, like maybe around 15 minutes. It's kind of a, I thought it would be longer than that. And we didn't really learn anything new. Like, I don't, they didn't really reveal anything new or interesting about the show, of course, because, you know, spoilers, they don't want to let any spoilers out at all. I mean, the only, the only real new bit of information I think that we learned was that Craig Mazin said that, actually, not Craig Mazin, Neil Druckmann said that there are things that they wanted to put in the games. That they didn't, and now they're in the show. So that could be interesting, how that would play out. Though, it may be hard unless you're like a hardcore fan of the games and know them back and backwards and forwards. Maybe you'll notice that. I don't know, but I mean, it's hard to say. But we didn't really learn a whole lot, anything really new. I mean, it was great to see how much Bella and Pedro are getting along. I hope it's not fake. I mean, it looks pretty genuine. Pedro has always come across as a very genuine guy, and he's probably one of the most beloved actors in the world right now. And of course, there this is in Brazil, so they love him. As soon as he came on stage, it was just like crazy high cheers, people calling his name. And he was there; he was at this event before for doing the Mandalorian. So now we hear he is back again. But yeah, we didn't really learn a whole lot. It was kind of funny just to see Craig Mazin being like animated because I listen to his podcast like almost every week script notes and he always sounds kind of like you know uh, whatever not I don't even know how to describe he just always doesn't seem like I have a high energy kind of person so on here on the stage he's all like jacked up so I don't know maybe he just had a coffee or he's acting it up because he just doesn't come across as a super animated energetic person to me because you know he's not an actor actors can like pretend all the time. Uh, I don't know. Someone did ask Gabriel Luna, who plays the brother Tommy, because he, so far from everyone on the cast, he seems to be the only one who's played all the games. Because uh, from what I heard, Pedro only played a little bit of it. I don't know if Bella did. Bella probably did, but, but uh, Gabriel played like both games back to back, like one and two. So that's pretty cool. He got he played the entire games like fully. Then there's Merle, the the lady there, Merle Danridge, who was part of the actual games too. So it's cool that she's like was in the games and now she's in the show as well. Though it's curious why there aren't any other actors there. I'm not sure why that is, but I guess she's a big part of the story, anyways. But like, I don't think I don't think some other people like Bill, who's being played by uh, Nick Offerman, has as big as a role as they seem to be showing in the trailers or maybe he does and maybe he just couldn't make it but yeah here's Gabriel talking about playing the games he pretty much they only ever ask him one question it kind of just you know like most panels it just seems to be more about Bella and Pedro and their relationship which they did comment on and say like you know as the show progressed they got closer which would which obviously works because you know as the game progresses they get closer because they start out kind of hating each other or at least being annoyed by each other but eventually becoming to like you know love each other like a father-daughter relationship which is you know the most the most the co core of the entire story and which was m what makes the game so compelling for people is the the beautiful relationship that grows between uh, uh, Ellie and uh, Joel so it's kind of sometimes it's, it's a little confusing to say Bella and then Ellie because their names are so similar. But yeah, so their relationship grew 
as the show was being created so but really no new spoilers they talked a little bit about the clickers and the practical effects that they used and that they hired some movement experts for like the they, they just didn't hire any regular people they hired like people who do special stunt acting type things to, for the movements and whatnots so that was cool but yeah I feel like I was cut it was a little bit too short I mean it was I was all excited all week to watch this and then it was about 15 minutes so I don't know but I mean any new news about The Last of Us is exciting I feel like this is probably the last little bit of big info we're gonna get about the show until it comes out in January we got like a month and a half away from the show so that's exciting but if you're watching this and you watch the panel, let me know what you think. Is there anything that I missed? Because, yeah, well, yeah, well, they did have Ella, they did, they did get Bella to play the guitar a little bit. Like a tiny little bit. I don't know if she learned to play, learned for the show, or if she already knew anyways. But she played the guitar for like 10 seconds. And that's that's about it. But, you know, still a cool panel. Just wish it was longer. And what do you think? Let me know if you think it could, could have been longer. If you learn anything that you thought was cool that I didn't mention. I don't know. Let me know. But thanks for watching. And subscribe. And you know all that other fun stuff.